think that when you know there's a lot of stories of you know all of these covid deaths and all of these covid issues it can create fear to the point where people comply because mm. it's in the media it's in front of us so we all get concerned so it will ties up to my next question which is why how do you think that the whole fear mongering concept is affecting people in terms of their mental health because it's constantly presented to us I mean, I get lots of emails from people who are in terrible fear. Um, and, and, you know, it's clear that they need some sort of therapy because, you know, they're, they're terribly frightened even of sending their children to school when all the evidence shows that actually children are, you know, pretty well immune. Or, and when they aren't immune, they have a very, very mild uh, dose of the disease. But, you know, I, I get letters from parents saying that they, they want to keep their children out of school because they don't trust the fact you know they think it might be much worse and clearly the reason for building up that that fear at the start and talking about long covid and, and talking about the number of deaths and uh, uh, and all the rest was to try and get compliance because many of the um restrictions are extraordinarily hard to enforce um but nevertheless you gain compliance by generating fear when it worked but I'm afraid it worked too well because many people living in fear and in anxiety, that is not healthy. And we've seen that toll um, in mental health. I mean, let's face it, children, uh, particularly young people, have enough um, on their plate in terms of mental health issues that my generation I never had to deal with in terms of the anxieties generated by social media, which was never a pressure that, that we had. So we had those difficulties already, and I think we, we built on them and made it much worse.